None other than the carryover chant, Bronwyn Bishop, of course, former Speaker of the House, the man who's the former Communications Minister, Senator, but always just here to help. None other than the wonderful Stephen Conroy. Now, um, I am not going to pretend that the story that we heard about a Cabinet discussion about the what is and isn't the census is a big story. But I am going to talk about one thing, which is I've been around long enough that once you start to hear leaks from Cabinet, something's going wrong. Now, some people have told me, well, a story clearly that is favourable to the Prime Minister that is leaked from Cabinet was really clearly something that he approved of. It's a different way of doing a press release. But, very obviously, the way that all of this was packaged up in the papers today was that someone was telling the newspapers what was being said around the Cabinet table. Now, Stephen, I'll start with you. Obviously, the nature of the leak is positive to the Prime Minister. Obviously, the issue is one that we've discussed before. But let's all imagine things were as they appeared by, from the journalist's perspective, was that this was a leak from the Cabinet table. You, wouldn't, you would surely agree with me that regardless of whether it was Team Red, Team Blue or any government in our history, as soon as we start to know what's going on in and around the Cabinet table, something's going on. Well, I think, as you said, it wouldn't matter who was in government, and both Bronwyn and I have been in the Ministry and Cabinet. Uh, when you start reading multiple sources uh, being quoted uh, and giving accurate descriptions, it's not uh, in the spirit of, you know, Cabinet solidarity. So I think that, you know, the fact that this isn't the absolute first, there's been one or two minor instances, but certainly this is the biggest. It's not, you know, earth shattering, as you've said. It's Absolutely. on a relatively small issue, given the other issues that are impacting the Australian public. But it's, it is very untidy when you start to see and read commentary that takes place in Cabinet, and I'm sure even Bronwyn would agree with that. Well, well, and this is the point, Absolutely. Bronwyn, where, I mean, as both of you know, right, the way it's supposed to work is that Cabinet is the place where you can speak as freely as possible as a collective group to work out which what decision you're going to take, then you're all bound by whatever the majority of the room is and you all go out and argue it to the hilt, right? That's right. If, if there is someone saying what's being said during what would otherwise be sort of, you know, like any meeting anyone has in their office that's a planning meeting or a decision meeting, well, then you've got a problem with your business... And this is a, I think, the beginning of a significant problem for Anthony Albanese. Uh, I'm not suggesting he's about to be rolled as Prime Minister or any garbage like that in the next... But, but let's be honest. Every poll says that he's underwater when it comes to his own popularity. They're at 50-50 um, in two-party preferred. They're behind in primary vote. And, as we'll get to a second, in the economy, there's not a lot that's going their way at the moment. That's why I lead with this tonight. What do you think of it? Well, whenever a cabinet starts to leak, it's trouble. And the idea that a prime minister would authorise uh, someone to leak from cabinet is crazy stuff. Right. Um, I, I was think, just saying that's the best possible spin I could say. Yeah, think. but one, one of the telltale defense. lines was when somebody said... He spoke about it in cabinet, talking about the prime minister, and then said it was fire and brimstone. Um, that indicates he was rattled. Right. And that's the impression that statement gives. Because in that room, you're not supposed to get fired up. You're just supposed to have these logical back and forths. Well, or not, in that room, you do not, fire up, don't you're you? Su you're certainly not supposed to have it reported outside that you're fired up. Right. Because you are really seething with anger or whatever. But whenever a, a cabinet starts to leak, it's trouble. Yeah. Oh. And the next sign is when the public service starts to leak. That is... More trouble. Well, they've just got their biggest pay rise in 10 years. So I think there's a hope uh, <laughs> that they won't at any time soon, but you, you're very right. And, of course, the way that that works is that, again, and, you know, tell me if I, I'm, I'm in the wrong zone here, guys, but I'm imagining that when you've got a problem, you ask the public servants to come up with the solutions, there's uh, the sandwich that's really rotten, there's the sandwich that is not really a sandwich, and then you're presented with the moderate option in the middle... But, of course, if for whatever reason you start to be saying to your people, no, I'm, I'm going to go for this sandwich you don't want, then suddenly questions start turning up. Minister, is it not true that you have been offered one of three sandwiches and one sandwich is particularly bad? And then that's what becomes the...
question time game for the next little while. So that would be the example of the public service leaking, mm -hmm. correct? Good. All right. Now, let's talk about the, uh, the economy here. It ain't good. It ain't good. And uh, the Treasurer is sort of saying, oh, it's all global, when I just showed the numbers about how similar things are going around the world. Uh, again, we are part of a wider system, but we were with the last mob, but everything was so personal in relation to the last mob. So the same rule will be applied uh, in this case. But what does today's number show when, again, even on the ABC, they are saying the only reason the car is idling at the lights and slightly rolling forward is because of the number of people we're trying to shove on the back seat? Well, the, the really worrying thing is, and Chalmers comes out and says, um, the only reason there was any growth is because of government spending. Yeah. What that means is it is sucking success out of the private sector. It's sucking um, the ability of the private sector to attract people that it needs to, to survive in this very difficult time. Uh, and so the economy is very largely out of balance. Now, the RBA doesn't care about that. Spending is spending. Mm. Uh, but if you look at the figures and you see the imbalance where so many of the new jobs created are either in the public sector or dependent on the government spending. Correct. Like the NDIS. So it, it, uh, it, it really is uh, a big concern. And this is a figure we haven't seen since 1991. Now, I, I remember what it was like when we had the uh, recession we had to have. Um, and I've got to tell you, Mr Chalmers, ain't no Mr Keating. Well, and remember, the doctor bid is he not a doctor of economics, he's a doctor of political communication. <laughs> he might have written uh, his uh, PhD uh, thesis <laughs> on Keating, but there is no comparison. When, when Richo said to me the other day in conversation, he really does need more enemies, doesn't he? It says a lot. <laughs> All right, give me an idea here, Stephen, again. Uh, we know where, we're, where, we're, where we are. No doubt you will say it's not as bad as I may well present it, but it's pretty obvious that when they say global, 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 and then you go and have a look at what the inflation rate is in those places and the growth rate in those places, and if all of them are doing better than us, then we're running kind of towards the back end of the global economy, aren't we? Look, uh, Paul, your viewers have heard me extensively on the appalling uh, Reserve Bank performance over the last number of years. They pushed interest rates too high after promising they wouldn't put them up and now they're being pig-headed in refusing to lower them. They have ground this economy to an almost halt. And... I'm sorry, Paul, but you know, GDP is measured C, consumption, consumers, I, investment, G, governments. That equals GDP. That's 101 economics. Yeah. So the governments are part of uh, what creates GDP growth or uh, contraction. And if the government didn't have the sort of spending that it's got at the moment, the Reserve Bank would have successfully destroyed this economy. Those are the simple facts. It's maths, it's statistics, mm. it's whatever you want to call it. No, uh, it and to borrow from Bronwyn, the, uh, that, sorry, Bronwyn, just, just go and read a first year textbook. Okay? Yeah, but, 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 what but okay, the Reserve but, Bank have done about. to we, borrow we, from we'll Bronwyn is they've actually, they've actually sucked the life out of the private sector, the Reserve Bank. So 